With us now is Matt Boss of J.P. Morgan. He was just named the number one retail and department store analyst on Institutional Investors All America Research Team ranking. This is his fifth time at number one in the past six years. Matt, you're gonna retire the trophy, Matt. It's, <laughs> Thanks for having well, me. We're gonna call it the Boss Trophy here. It's, 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 forget about the others. So let's look at rising. Let me ask you a general question, then we'll drill down on some specific stuff. You got higher labor costs. You got higher interest costs. You got higher cost of goods potentially coming in from overseas, subject to tariff, <laughs> and you've got higher fuel costs that might affect uh, consumers' propensity to spend. How is that going to ripple through the retail system? So I think two things that you missed. You cited the headwinds, but you didn't cite unemployment at a 50-year low and wages starting to rise. And you have three years now of minimum wage increases. 20 states next year are set to, to raise the minimum wage again. That's leading to consumer confidence at a 35-year high. We think it's been a pretty good back to school. We think we set up for another nice holiday 2018. And I actually think the consumer narrative of strength will continue into 2019. So you think, though, the, uh, and I was going to say, actually, uh, but, but didn't, that, that in truth, it is stacking up like a very good holiday season for most of these retailers because of the, of the factors you cite. And so you think that those countervailing pressures are going are gonna to push these retailers forward. What's your favorite stock that you follow? So I, I think what you want to focus on, and, and so I think there's a very big difference between the consumer and retail, meaning the consumer, I think, is in a great place. Retail still has a lot of those crosshairs that you, that you mentioned, but also continued consolidation of brick and mortar retail. So if you can find ways to own the low to middle income consumer and at the same time benefit from continued disruption, that's where you want to be playing. To us, that's the off price retailers and that's discount retailers. Who lives there? Name them. So TJ Maxx in Burlington, as well as Ollie's, would be our picks in off-price. And then at discount retail, we like Dollar General and Five Below. So again, you own that low to middle income consumer, and you benefit from store closures. You benefit from brick and mortar consolidation. I think these are your market share winners in that scenario. I don't really understand the discounters, Matt, because on one hand, you have the consumer, which is in better shape from rising <coughs> wages. But on the other hand, you've got those retailers, which are also facing the pressure to raise their own wages for their workers with a very razor thin margin. So. Why do you think that they are well positioned? Yeah, so the, the number one factor in these models is the fixed cost leverage. And so if sales are rising, meaning you look at a dollar general, they can leverage their SGNA or their fixed cost expenses at roughly a two to two and a half percent same store sales. They've been driving three percent same store sales. If they continue to do that, they're a 10 to 15 percent earnings grower. That's a name that you want to own with a mid teens multiple. Five below is a 20 percent earnings grower at a one to two percent same store sales. They've been driving close to three to four percent same store sales. Ollie's is the same scenario. So the wages are rising, but if there's any trickle down impact to the consumer, which I think you started to see last year in the back half of the year, last year's holiday, I think we're going to lap this holiday with another strong holiday, meaning two year stacks, I think, are going to accelerate. I think you head into 2019 looks to us like tax refunds could actually be a tailwind to start the year. I think 2019 starts off on the right foot. And I think if some of these factors like employment and wages continue in the right direction, then I think the consumer backdrop remains favorable for potentially the balance of next year as but, well. So you, you don't see any problem if, say, uh, what people are paying on their credit card interest fees rises dramatically. You don't see that as being an obstacle to the shopping. I think it's major shocks that's the more important factor, meaning I think the consumer budgets, and, and, and I do think that they think ahead, and I think the key here is more the moderate pace of the interest rates rise. And I actually yeah. think the media attention around it as well, meaning, I mean, the tenure at 3.2, pre-recession, we were more in the four to five. It's definitely a difference versus a couple of years ago for borrowers costs, particularly those that have one or two mortgages and maybe a car loan as well. But if you think about the low to middle income consumer, I think the biggest thing in their lives is potentially they feel better about their job and, and they potentially are seeing more money in their in their biweekly paycheck. I think that potentially trumps some of these headwinds that, you know, we're talking about that maybe, you know, multiple years from now, interest rates in a completely different level. Right. But I think as long as the pace is slow and gradual, I think that's the most important factor.